I want to thank the gentleman from Wisconsin, and uh, uh, I want to associate myself with your remarks and uh, those of the gentleman from California regarding <clears throat> what's happened at Volkswagen and um, the importance of the union movement in this country. If uh, anyone wants to know where the economic success of the middle class in this country has come from, you just need to follow the union movement. As the union movement grew and strengthened, so did the middle class and jobs and opportunities. And as we've seen the decline in recent years, we've seen a similar decline in income and jobs and, and opportunities. And if anyone, you know, thinks for one moment that elections don't have uh, consequences, they need to take a look at their history. You know, I come from the Iron Range, and we got a lot of, a lot of mining and steel workers up there. Back in 19... 48, if you'll allow me to just do a little history here, uh, and leading up to that, the Steelworkers Union um, proposed contracts that would allow them to negotiate pensions and health care benefits. And wouldn't you know, the NLRB in 1947 said, no, you can't do that. That's not okay. That's off the table. That's not a subject for negotiations. And guess what? Not many people had pension benefits and health care at the time. Well, it became a big issue in the 1948 election. And Harry Truman, as we all know, won the election. Well, guess what? He had the opportunity to appoint a number of people uh, to the NLRB. And that issue was brought before the NLRB again. And guess what? This time, the NLRB ruled that no, it is appropriate for unions to negotiate for pensions, to negotiate for health care benefits. And that is a result of an election contest and the union movement coming together was the genesis of a generation that had prosperity and opportunities perhaps unparalleled anywhere in the history of this country. I've submitted uh, back when uh, my generation entered in the employment market, if you were going to be a failure, you had to have a plan. There were just such an abundance of opportunities. And I'm sometimes ashamed and embarrassed that my generation doesn't want to step up and do for this generation and the next generation what was done for us. And so uh, I commend you uh, for what you're doing here today. And I also want to associate myself with the remarks uh, from the gentleman from Pennsylvania. Um, and we could go on and we could add more to the litany of things that are costing the rest of us to subsidize uh, the businesses in this country. And I know about business. I spent the last 32 years of my life in business. I'm a business guy. And it, it breaks my heart to see working men and women having to go to the food shelves. Uh, to get food to feed their families. So I rise uh, here tonight uh, to uh, talk about the minimum wage, just briefly. And, you know, we hear about all these millions of new jobs that have been created in recent years. One of my constituents said to me the other day, he said, you know, it's a darn good thing we've created millions of new jobs because a guy needs two or three of them to make a living. Well, that's, that is, in fact, what is happening. And it's small comfort, small comfort to uh, someone who's working these minimum wage jobs to know that if they can put two or three of them together, uh, they can provide for their family, uh, make the rent payment, the mortgage payment, uh, buy the groceries, uh, clothing uh, for the kids. But, but, you put in two or three jobs, there's no time left for the family. A minimum wage increase is pro-family. It is pro-American. It's the foundation of what made this country the great country that it is. Mr. Speaker, I hear all the time in my district as I travel and stop at the cafes and the uh, filling stations and the, uh, um, the, the convenience stores uh, about these people that are working two and three, 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 three jobs just to make ends meet. And all because our minimum wage is simply not enough to take care of our families. The lack of a decent and fair minimum wage is unfair to families. 
It's unfair to children. It's unfair to the elderly. It's unfair to the hardworking mothers and fathers, men and women in this country who go to work every day, providing the goods, the services that we need so that uh, we can continue on the path of the great nation that we have been. Mr. Speaker, it's time that we raise this minimum wage. Where I come from, morality and ethics dictate it. If someone is willing to go to work every day and every week and every month to provide essential goods and services for the rest of us and this nation, they're entitled to a wage that will allow them to live with a modicum of comfort and dignity. dignity. That's what this is all about. So, Mr. Speaker, let us vote on this issue. You know, you know what the outcome will be. We will increase the minimum wage if we're given an opportunity to vote on it here in this House. I know there are plenty of Republicans and Democrats who will vote to do that. Let's restore democracy to this institution. Let's allow this matter to be brought before the House. Let's have a vote on it. Let's give America a pay raise now. It's desperately needed. Thank you, Mr. Pocan, Mr. Speaker, members of the House.